This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at the concept of random forests and I will also explain what kind of interview questions may be asked related to random forests. So random forest is an ensemble machine learning algorithm. It is a forest of decision trees. It uses a concept called as wisdom of crowd and it can be used for classification as well as regression. Right? Ensemble algorithms also use this concept of wisdom of crowd. Now, what is the concept of wisdom of crowd? Suppose you are going to buy a new car. You would ask your friends, right? Which car you have? What is your opinion on this particular brand? Right? You would ask many friends, relatives. And then finally, what you will do is that you will consider their uh, opinions and then you will um, do either a majority vote or you will you know, if three or four people say that Maruti is better than Tata for a specific car, right? Balino is better than Altros. Then probably you will get influenced by that and you may take a decision to buy it, right? Or you look at online reviews of, you know, different reviews of Balino versus Altros, right? And each review, uh, some review says Balino is better. Some review says Altros is better. And finally, if you see majority of reviews saying Balino is better, probably you will go with Balino. So this is the wisdom of crowd uh, concept, right? Now, what are the key concepts in, uh, you know, uh, your random forest? So the first key concept is bagging. Okay. Bagging stands for bootstrap aggregating. I've made another video on bagging. I'll put the link to that video in the description of this video. You can look into it. But the key idea is that if you have a training data set like this, right, where you have n samples, you have some features and you have a target, right? Now what bagging does is that you create something called as bagged samples with replacement. Okay. That is why if you see this sample one, it has the same set of features and you have the target, right? But you see some samples are repeated over here. Okay. And some samples will be left out. Okay. This is done in a random fashion. So this is a bagged sample. So you can create B bagged samples like this. Okay. This is another example of a sample here. If you see that certain data points are repeated. Okay. So you are creating basically bagged data sets from your training data set. Okay. And each of these samples also has each of these data set also has n samples. Okay. Some samples will be left out of this, right? In the process of this sampling with replacement and creating this bagged data sets. Okay. So what happens over here? You are training set as n samples. You have now created B random samples, right? Now what do you do? For each of these B random samples, basically the B data sets, bagged data sets, you will now create a classification or a regression tree, right? You will create a classification or a regression tree. For example, in this case, you will have B classification or regression trees, right? Now for inference, what do you do when you get an unseen sample? If it is a case of regression, you will give the unseen sample as input to each of these B trees. You will get the output and then you will average it. This is for regression, right? If it is classification, what you do is that you uh, do a majority vote on the output of each of these B trees, right? So this is the simple concept of bagging with decision trees, right? So here, if you look at uh, B, it is a number of trees. It's a hyperparameter. So how can you estimate the optimal number of trees? You can either do cross validation or there is a concept called out of bag error. What happens is that where every bag is created, every bag data set is created, some samples will be left out, right? So the decision tree created for that particular uh, bag data set can be evaluated on these samples. And for these samples, you have the ground truth, right? And you can get such uh, errors for each of the trees, each of the B trees, and then you can average that is your out of bag error, right? Another way is you can do cross validation to find the optimal number of trees, right? So in case of bagging here, you, you create bagged data sets. Okay. Bagged data sets are created with uh, sampling, random sampling with replacement, right? And then you, for each of the bagged 
data set you do a classification or a regression tree de depending upon the problem and then if it is regression you do an average on the unseen data if it is classification you do a majority vote okay simple concept right and here there is a hyperparameter which is optimal number of trees now from this bagging to how do we move to the random forests concept right so here in random forest what we do is that you will do the same thing you will get b bagged samples of size n from your training data set right then the difference comes is that when you are training a decision tree on each of these b data set and when you are doing a node split you will randomly select smaller number of m features from the training set in the previous case right each of these b tree had all the features right each of these b trees over here one to b trees had all the features but in case of random forest what we will do is that we will only select smaller number of features so what will happen each of the bagged tree will have different set of features now right again you will train it you will get different decision trees and if it is a regression again you will do an average if it is a classification you will do a voting to get your output okay on your unseen sample here also you can use our out of bag error and cross validation okay so here what happens is that as i've said you are creating these bagged samples same process as before from your training data set right but when you are creating the trees right you will do sub sampling of basically you will uh, select a random subset of features for each tree over here okay so maybe the first tree is x1 x2 x5 feature whereas the second tree may have x3 x4 x6 feature right the third tree may have x2 x4 x5 and so on right so this is the concept over here right so why is this random forest random right it it is because of these two things one is bagging whereby you are creating this random subsets of data and the second one is you are also doing random subset of features for this different decision trees which are created right that is why this is a random forest of decision trees okay so when you do bagging what happens it decreases variance of the model without increasing bias why does this happen if you have a single tree the predictions are highly sensitive to noise right if you uh, have average of many trees it becomes not sensitive to noise if the trees are not correlated right since the samples for each of the tree is different via bagging right it kind of decorrelates the different trees basically it decorrelates the trees created on the different bagged data sets on top of that you also do random subset of features right so in this way you are kind of decorrelating the trees as well right so next question is how many features right so what they say is that if it is a classification problem for the random subset you can consider square root of p where is p is the number of features if it is regression it is subset of all the features right so this is about you know why is this a random forest right why is this uh, known as a random forest okay now let's go into what is the advantage as i said because of the bagging process some data is always left out right so you don't uh, require hold out data you can use the entire training set right you can do parallelization In, uh, since different trees are getting created you can create each of them parallelly independent of each other okay so you also have reduction of variance hence reduction of overfitting decision trees are prone to overfitting and this can be overcome over here you can also determine feature importance there is a method to do it using um, random forest and it can also be applied for classification as well as regression right now what are the disadvantages now the disadvantages are you know uh, you cannot actually uh, interpret the results of the random forest right decision tree is much more to interpret here it is kind of voting on the different trees right so it becomes difficult second thing is that uh, you know it is it takes more training time because you are fitting so many trees inference is also more because you have to get the output of each of the tree so these are some of the disadvantages of random forests so the next question is when to avoid random forests what kind of data doesn't work with random forest for that i would refer you to this particular link uh, this link will be posted on the description of the video you can check out and you can learn for yourself 
but the key things are like if data is very sparse you have high dimensions in the data image data or uh, audio data and things like that okay but you can uh, there are some good answers over here which you can explore for yourself and understand okay so the key interview questions around random forest will be mostly on what is the concept of bagging right and uh, what is random uh, sample replacement basically that uh, bagging right random sample uh, sampling with replacement then questions could be around uh, the subset of features right how does random forest reduce variance of a model and again what uh, for what kind of data would random forest work and for what kind of data it would not work i hope uh, you find this video on random forest useful and uh, if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel see you in another video happy learning